The year was 1940. Our heroes from Seoul, superior armed forces. Our heroes from Seoul, superior armed forces assistance. The most dangerous Nazi pilot with the most dangerous Nazi, dangerous Nazi pilot with his talons. Highly trained pilots in their own right, piloting their technologically superior planes. Before we get back into action, let's look into how the bald eagle came to be. The bald eagle used to be a mild-mannered nuclear physicist, Samuel Patricks. While the other scientists worked on their projects, Samuel was working on an experiment of his own, on an atom bomb. There came the day he had to test it. His assistant, Barbara, was not excited about the prospect. Samuel was making finishing touches on his bomb when Barbara walked in. Samuel, we need to talk. Samuel continued to work on his project. It's Professor Patrick's to you. Don't patronize me like that. I'm half this project. Are you sure? You're the one who wants to scrap it. I don't want to scrap it. I want more time. Any more time and we don't get the grant. We need this. Barbara shook her head. No, you need this. You are my assistant. You will listen and keep your mouth shut. Barbara's eyes widened in shock. <gasps> she delivered a hard slap to Samuel's face. Barbara glared at Samuel with fury, fighting back tears. Don't you ever disrespect me like that again. Everyone may call me assistant, but you know damn well I am a big part of this project. Samuel held his sore cheek as he glared back at Barbara in rage. Your services are no longer. Barbara stared in shock at Sam. <gasps> she composed herself. Barely. Good day, Professor. Before storming off, Samuel continued to work on his project. While cutting corners and not paying attention to certain unimportant details. Then came the day of the test. Samuel was making his way to the test site. When he was stopped in his tracks by Barbara, Samuel composed himself. Barbara? What brings you here? Barbara gave Samuel a weak smile. I'm here to show my support of our project. Samuel smiled weakly himself. Thank you. A crowd was gathered. As they got ready to drop Samuel's bomb. Turn! 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 And watch the bomb being raised into the air on a crane. Seven! Six! Five! Far enough away from the onlookers, or so they thought, enough away from four, three, two, one, one. The bomb was dropped. The bomb hit the ground and detonated. The shockwave swept over the land and came closer. The shockwave swept over the land and came closer. And closer. And closer. Samuel watched the shockwave come over him in horror. What have I done? As the shockwave passed over him, then he passed into darkness. How is he today? Still unconscious. Thanks. Any change in his vitals? No. This makes no sense. He shouldn't have even survived the... Oh my god. He's waking up. Samuel stood and watched the shockwave coming towards him. Samuel! Samuel looked to see Barbara running towards him. He shook his head furiously. Barbara! No! Get out of here! Barbara continued to run towards Samuel. Samuel! Samuel reached out his hand as if he would push Barbara away from danger despite her being so far away. Barbara! Samuel watched as the shockwave disintegrated Barbara. Barbara! The shockwave knocked Samuel unconscious. Samuel woke, shocking the doctor and nurse. Barbara! No! Samuel looked around, taking in his environment. Huh? The doctor and nurse stared at Samuel in shock and surprise. Good morning, Mr. Patricks. Samuel looked at the doctor with confusion and fear. Where is everyone? The doctor hung his head in shame. We need to talk. The doctor explained the situation to Samuel. It was night over the hospital.
Samuel laid in bed, thinking about what the doctor told him. He was horrified. No one had survived the blast. Except him. He hadn't suffered a scratch, although he had no hair anywhere on his body. He did notice that his body was more fit and muscular since the accident. Samuel looked towards a corner of his hospital room to see Barbara in the corner. He smiled in excitement. Barbara? His smile faded as he saw that Barbara was merely staring at him. Her expression was anger. I didn't think anyone survived the explosion. Barbara just continued to stare. Samuel grew concerned and curious. Barbara? Why won't you say anything? Barbara continued to stare. Please, say something. Barbara continued to stare. I'm sorry. I didn't listen to you. Barbara continued to stare. I know this is all my fault. Barbara continued to stare. Please, say something. Say something. Yell at me. Barbara started fading away. No, don't leave me. But Sammy was shouting at the wall as Barbara faded away. He broke down and cried. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the morning came. The doctor entered Samuel's room. Hope you're doing better today, Mr. Pat. He found that Samuel was gone. What the? The doctor saw the window was open. The doctor looked through the window down towards the ground. Mr. Patrick's! The doctor was surprised to find no body on the ground. Where? Doctor! The doctor looked up to see Samuel floating in the air. What do I do about this? The government agents heard about the incident with the flying man and brought Samuel to a secret facility. During his test, he found that he had other abilities. He discovered that his strength and agility were enhanced. As he took down six soldiers in a training session. It wouldn't be long before Samuel discovered his most devastating ability. It would be on his first mission. Samuel was given his costume and named the Bald Eagle. It was brown tights with two yellow letters, B and E, on the chest. A white cape billowed behind him. Around his waist was a utility belt with a few pistols, knives, and grenades. Samuel was sent on a mission to infiltrate a Japanese ship. Samuel flew over towards the ship under the cover of night. Samuel sneaked his way through the battleship. Samuel made his way towards the captain's quarters. Samuel managed to sneak in and Photograph all of their plans. As Samuel made his escape, he was caught by a guard. Subo! Soko ni Toshi! Damn! Samuel punched the guard, knocking him out and sending him to the knocking him out and sending him to the However, as Samuel heard the alarm, he knew his mission was compromised. Damn! Samuel ran. Samuel ran with several guards behind him. Samuel was about to take flight when a guard fired off a shot, tearing into Samuel's arm. The pain was so bad he screamed. The scream that came out was loud and devastating. When Samuel stopped, he found that he had destroyed the ship with his scream, leaving a husk floating on the water. Samuel flew away from the Japanese ship, at least what was left of it. His new ability and gunshot wound had drained him left of it. His new ability and gunshot he fought to keep himself in the air, and to keep himself conscious. Samuel lucked out as he saw a battleship in the distance. Samuel lucked out as he saw a battleship in the distance. Samuel smiled as he saw an American Finally the break. A sailor was mopping up the poop deck when he saw something in the distance. What the? The sailor was saw a man flying towards him. He shook his head in disbelief. I need to lay off the sauce. Samuel flew towards the ship with a big smile on his face as he slowly fell unconscious and fell faster. Samuel fell onto the boat's deck and skipped across it like a stone on water. With his journey ending with him slamming into a gun. The sailor ran to help the down flying man. Cause me. I need a cosmic. Samuel found himself back in a hospital room, much to his chagrin. 
Samuel woke up to a government agent standing over him. Hello? The government agent stared down at Samuel. Mr. Patricks. Samuel glared at his visitor. It's Professor. The government agent sneered. We both know we haven't been Professor in a while. Samuel sneered back. Then why did you ask my name? The government agent rolled his eyes. <sighs> You've been invited to join SOAR. Samuel stared at the government agent curiously. What's SOAR? 